games or what? Show me! Okay, let's do this fast. In December of 06, Sega and Gearbox Software announced that they were working on a whole new game based on the Alien franchise. Sega would publish the title while development would fall on Gearbox, at least that was the plan. According to an anonymous whistleblower, Gearbox took time, money, and staff away from Colonial Marines and put them to work on Duke Nukem Forever and Borderlands. Gearbox Software allegedly neglected to inform Sega and continued to receive full payments, much of which went towards this epic disaster and this critical darling. Where did that leave Colonial Marines? Rather than doing the work Sega was paying them oodles of money to do, Gearbox handed the title off to Timegate Studios, Demiurge, and Nerve. Gearbox did some work, yes, but Timegate was largely responsible for the single-player campaign, with Demiurge and Nerve producing DLC. I've actually heard some gamers defend these actions, which is absolutely absurd. You know what, let me put it to you this way. Say you're Sonic and you give Amy Rose 50 rings to suck your blue blur. I'm sure you're expecting Amy Rose herself to perform this service. Well, what if Amy blindfolds you, then leaves Tails there to gurgle your spunk while she takes Shadow's hedgehog up the ass? But hey, what do you care? You got off, right? Does it really matter who does it? Of course it does. Theft is theft, so shut the fuck up. Thank you. A few friends and gamers have told me, it's a video game, so lighten up. Valid point, sure. However, maybe if it weren't being recognized as canon or touted as the next best thing to Aliens, one of the most watchable, quotable, and enjoyable fucking films ever made, I'd be a tad more agreeable. Unfortunately, it was. So forgive me if I'm a little butthurt that this piece of shit failed to live up to the expectations both the developer and the publisher set for me. Okay? Anyway, the story is set 17 weeks after the events in Aliens. After receiving a distress call from Corporal Dwayne Hicks, Michael Bean reprising his role, a rescue squad is dispatched to LV-426 to investigate. Much to their surprise, the Sulaco is waiting in orbit. After an excessive amount of cliched soldier boy talk from Captain Cruz, Sephora links up with the Sulaco. Corporal Winters, Private Loudmouth Asshole O'Neill, and Private Stereotypical Tough Chick Clarison march onward. Cornette. Jesus, no. You stumble upon a cocooned grunt begging for help. Yeah, that wasn't telegraphed. Aliens vs. Predator knew how to produce genuine scares. It would throw you off with carefully placed misdirection, then whisper in your ear, Boo! This is just obvious and been there, done that. We carry on with this band of dimwits. I say dimwit because only a fucking moron with absolutely no regard for his or her team would choose to punch their own ticket with a grenade in a fucking airlock. It's obviously a cheap attempt to create a quote-unquote thrilling set piece, though it trips over its own dick thanks to the stunning lack of logic. Anyway, they discover the ships infested with xenomorphs and that way you PMCs are in control of the Sulaco, using leftover leather necks as hosts in way you experiments. Wait, what? How? In Aliens, everything within 30 kilometers of the colony was vaporized. Ripley committed suicide at the end of Alien 3 and couldn't be cloned for another 200 years, so that's out. What happened? Did a Xeno hide out in a fucking fridge? Oh, it gets better. Our team of dullards managed to escape on a dropship with a Captain Cruz, Lieutenant Reed, and Bishop 2.0, all so that they can crash land on LV-426, only a stone's throw away from... Hadley's Hope? Really? Maybe Bishop's definition of vaporized differs from mine, but I'm pretty sure this establishment should have been turned into a cloud of vapor the size of Nebraska, then dissipated. So this place should be nothing. Instead, it looks like it got hit by a hurricane that added some skylights and took out a wall or two. Heavens no! But wait, there's more. I warn you now, I'm going to spoil a really big twist, so don't cry foul in my comments, okay? Hicks is back. Yes, somehow Hicks is back back. How? How, 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 how? The explanation is so fucking thin, it's goddamn anorexic. The plot is a disgrace. The characters are just pale imitations of those found in Aliens. Dialogue is asinine, and I haven't even touched the fucking gameplay yet. It fares 
a bit better than the story, to be honest. That's not saying much, though. Seriously, it's underwhelming at best, infuriating at worst. First of all, you have to press a shoulder button to use the motion sensor. Why? In Alien Trilogy, Aliens vs. Predator, even Alien 3 on the Genesis, the sensor's a permanent fixture on the HUD. Is there any reason why the developers felt the need to complicate matters? Inquiring minds want to know. You're given a wide array of weapons to work with, many of which are original to this entry and are easily modified with scopes, laser sights, and silencers. Yeah, because there are so many opportunities in which to employ stealth. Don't get me wrong, options are always nice, but selecting weapons can be cumbersome and can lead to premature death if you're not careful. If you're fighting PMCs, yeah, you can duck behind a wall or a crate and rummage all you want, though Xenos aren't so concerned for their own lives. There's no hiding from these bastards, so you're screwed. Speaking of the Xenos, they're not as cunning here, even on harder settings. They're just harder to kill. I've tried shooting them in the head, but trying to aim is kind of sluggish and landing hits doesn't amount to very much. Not all the time. Hit detection is inconsistent, resulting in numerous fits of curse-laden madness. How about the graphics? It doesn't look any better than Aliens vs. Predator, in fact, it looks worse. I'm not even talking about the lighting or the level design, they're passable. No, I'm talking about the animation. I blow shit up in AVP and it looks great, it really feels as if it carries genuine weight, adding to my gratification. Even shooting eggs will result in a fluid, juicy splat. In Colonial Marines? What the fuck was that? Were practical effects not in the budget? How about some debris? No, 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 no. Oh, look at the Xenos when I shoot them. This game was held up in development for almost seven years. Supposedly it was delayed on several occasions because Gearbox wanted to make the game better. That's cute. One sequence that stands out as being halfway decent is where I have to avoid blind albino xenomorphs that hunt by sound and explode. God damn, man! You didn't tell me those guys exploded. They exploded? Yeah, it's not good. They were like, uh, oh, what's that noise? And then they fucking exploded! Coming to you. Surprisingly, it's really tense sequence. Of course, once you start thinking about it, everything falls to pieces. Xenomorphs take on certain traits from their hosts, right? So tell me, what in God's name did they fuck in order to produce this strain of mutants? Oh, well, maybe that's what they are. They're just mutants. It's the only sequence in the whole game that made my ass pucker. Once it's over, the tedium sets back in and I'm left with this crap. Leave motion trackers here, hold the fort for however long it takes before the nasties grow tired of your shenanigans, or pick up a gun sentry and try not to get killed in the process. What happened to this game? How can a game suck this fucking hard? How do people actually enjoy playing this? It's about as enjoyable as shoving a serrated dildo up my ass. If someone gets something out of this dead lay, I truly envy you because I'd rather take another crack at Technocop than fuck this busted cunt. Aliens Colonial Marines isn't a game, it's a goddamn dare to those that love first person shooters and aliens. Don't take it unless you're a masochist, in which case, have at it. Enjoy yourself. Oh my god. I just shot you, guy.